All right, folks, what's up? Welcome on in. It's an edition of War Chant TV. I'm Aslan Hajavandi, live. We're live. I'm here at the Midtown offices. Uh, we're going to bring on managing editor Ira Schofel to talk about the ACC and Florida State schedule for the 2019 football season. But a reminder before we get to that, we'll be having a recruiting chat at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, for everybody. It'll be for anybody that wants to come on and listen to uh, what's going on the very latest with Florida State's recruiting efforts. Michael Langston, our WarChant.com and Rivals.com recruiting analyst, will be on to talk about that. But before we get to that, let us get to this. Uh, the 2019 schedule has come out uh, today. Um, you want to hear what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, and I'm trying to get all this stuff done here on the fly, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. This makes it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and bring in our managing editor, Ira Schofel, right now to talk about the schedule. Ira, thanks so much for being with us, man. How are you? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man, anytime, anytime. Well, all right, so the one good thing as we start this thing off, a friend pointed out to me, is the fact that there's two bye weeks, so that means there's two weeks of the football season where you don't have to worry about Florida State losing. So that's an encouraging <laughs> thing, I feel like. That's the spirit. I don't, yeah. I don't know that that's the way, uh, you know, you want to go look at it, but I, I can see that. I can see that mindset. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just go ahead and unveil the schedule right now. And we'll kind of uh, give our thoughts on what we think. So obviously we knew about this uh, the whole time in terms of uh, uh, starting things off with Boise State in Jacksonville, though. That, that takes away one home game from the slate, though, for the Knowles, right? What was that now? Um, yeah, you're right. That's my bad. I apologize. I got too excited. Right. Um, that Boise State game is, is pretty darn important, though, right? Where you don't get a lot of credit if you beat them, but, man, if you lose, um, and then they're also a difficult team. Now, they did lose a good bit, uh, I believe, from this past season, uh, so it's not going to be possibly the best Boise State team, but... We all said that about Virginia Tech this past season, going into that game, and uh, we looked at all the losses Virginia Tech had on defense, and then they went out and played a really good game. Florida State struggled. So I think, to me, the, the big thing about that game is if Florida State plays well, look, Florida State's a better program than Boise State in terms of overall talent. If Florida State is, is well-prepared and well-coached and plays well in that game, it's a game they should win, certainly in Jacksonville. But I think we also know that's a game you could lose. And if you did – after what happened last season, it just would be, uh, I wouldn't say catastrophic, but it would uh, really uh, keep things trending in the wrong direction. Okay, so uh, you start off with Boise, and then you're back home uh, two hours back away uh, from Jacksonville, coming back home to take on Louisiana Monroe. Uh, I'm not, I don't, should we go win-loss on each one of these? Right, let's just walk, we'll just walk through week by week, and maybe we'll re yeah. revisit our predictions on it. Um, then at Virginia, that's obviously the, the rotational game uh, for Florida State coming out of the Coastal. That'll be on the road in Charlottesville. And, man, Virginia, who did they, who'd they put on? Was it South Carolina they, they put on the bowl yeah, game? Yeah, they beat the tar out of South Ooh. Carolina, 28 nothing. Uh, South Carolina had nothing. Now, of course, uh, Will Greer didn't play in that game, right? So that was a right. that was a big loss for them. But, um, yeah, no, Virginia's looking really good. It's, you know, Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall obviously had a really good reputation coming out of BYU, got off to a slow start at Virginia, and you and you started to wonder, well, maybe th is this guy ready for this level of competition? And, uh you know, they turned it around last year, had a really nice year. Um, so that'll be a tough test. It'll be beautiful, though, man. Charlottesville and, and Virginia in, in September. Uh, there's a lot a lot of worse, worse places to be in September. Right. Uh, do I get to make the road trip for that one, man? Are we going to take I the whole so, band I hope we all one? go. All right. Good so. stuff. Good stuff. All right. Um, looking ahead after that game, then, we're talking about uh, at home against Louisville. Uh, Louisville finished 2-10 uh, last season. 
and uh, obviously uh, cleaned house with an entire new coaching staff. So that looks quite favorably, uh, you would imagine, for Florida State. After Louisville, then NC State, uh, also in Tallahassee, uh, a revenge game. But I guess most all of these games are going to be revenge games on the schedule for this season. And then the first of two bye weeks come in. I guess let's just look at that first half, if you will, almost. Or I, I don't know if we're going to have to break the season up into thirds. Uh, hopefully, if Florida State's in a bowl game, they'll have two games after that second bye. But you got there. What is that? That's going to be five games and then a bye week. And of those five games, you have three at home, four in the state of Florida. And a lot of those look I don't want to say winnable. I mean, they're all winnable, I would think. I mean, none of those games you walk into thinking ap- – it's not like walking into South Bend in 2018. It's not like bracing yourself for Clemson last season. Uh, those first five games, that's a pretty manageable slate, it seems like, Ira. Yeah, if we didn't see what happened in 2018, if we were just blindly going into this season based on Florida State, what we know about Florida State football, this program, with those five games – You'd feel like there's a really good chance you'll be five and zero going into the second half of the season, uh, going into the bye week. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, but at the same time, we did see what happened in 2018. So you could see, well, you could lose. Certainly, you could lose at Virginia. Certainly, you could lose uh, at home to NC State. So uh, I think Louisville at home, the, to me, the the sure wins, I guess you would say, is Louisiana Monroe and, and Louisville at home. I have a hard time believing the new staff is going to turn. We saw what happened, Louisville was devoid of talent. Uh, they were just kind of going into a mountain. They were Bobby Petrino the last couple of years. So I don't think that was uh, – so I think that's about a sure win. You'd like to think – you'd like to think maybe 4-1 and one coming out, even if you don't have everything clicking, uh, that 4-1 and one and 5-0 and and oh is certainly possible. Uh, it's just hard to say that right now because of what we saw last season. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so that's uh, the first half, if you will, of this upcoming season. And then but, you get a bye week. Go ahead. And that and that bye week is perfect, though. I mean, like literally, you. I mean, if you were a coach, you would say, "Man, I'd love to get in about five or six games and get a bye week to kind of rest up." And certainly, they get that, and then they get it right before Clemson, which is is huge. Right, right. Uh, so let's go right to that then. Uh, not only do you have Clemson, you have to go uh, to Death Valley, uh, the defending national champions. Uh, let me see. Actually, let me look at their schedule too. Let's see who Clemson is going to have the week before they. Uh, Come take on Florida State if I can actually get to it here. Uh, Clemson's going to have uh, – they also have a bye week. They'll have played North Carolina the week before in Chapel Hill. They'll also have a bye week, and then they get to host Florida State. So look at the ACC. Look at that, Ira. They're looking out for their cash cow in football. Crazy how that works out, right? Amazing. You know, it's funny. And somebody made the comment to me earlier today when we were talking about uh, – before it came out, but you know, we were talking to some people about it. Uh, one of the things that they said was – you know, it's probably not good for the ACC to have Clemson be just this runaway freight train in the conference. So maybe you need to start looking out for Florida State a little bit as well. Um, so I agree. They didn't hurt Clemson with that schedule, but they also didn't hurt Florida State. And I think this is the first time, I mean, the early reactions on our message boards at the Tribal Council at Warchant.com, it seems like everybody's really happy with the schedule, which you never see. People usually right. find every possible reason to be mad about a schedule and people are happy, pretty happy about this one. I, do you think that's because it, it feels kind of like the ACC is maybe a little bit down or do you think it's the, the, the two bye weeks or do you just think it's the way it's, it's just laid out for Florida state? I mean, I think it's, it's, I think the two bye weeks is a big part of it. The, the ACC not being super strong probably helps. I mean, if, if NC state and Louisville, if Lamar Jackson was still at Louisville and uh, NC state was looking super formidable. Yeah, that would be, uh, probably a little bit different story, but no, I do think the bye weeks is huge. Look, there have been some years where you've only had one bye week, and it's come like in week ten, yeah. and it's like you know the team's dying in the you know seventh eighth week of the season, and you're like, man, why why would you do that to Florida State? So I think that I think the bye weeks is a big part of it, and right. it's just convenient that it worked out well. You know, I mean, like you said, they were able to give a bye week to Clemson as well, so neither team has an unfair advantage. Okay, so you got the bye week, and then you're at Clemson. Uh, and then you have Wake Forest also on the road. Uh, that's a game that I would imagine you're going to probably maybe pencil in as winnable for Florida State. And then you come back home and you have Syracuse and Miami. A uh, double dose of orange there, I guess you could say. Uh, Syracuse will be without Eric Dungy, so that helps things out if you're looking through the uh, the Florida State prism of things. And then obviously Miami comes to, to Tallahassee, so uh, the, the schedule starts 
ramping up a little bit there after obviously that bye week with with Clemson, and then you have to also hit the road and take on Wake Forest. But of those four games right there, you go Clemson, Wake Forest on the road, and then you're at home with with Syracuse, and you're at home with Miami. I think two and two. I mean, you feel good. I mean, I don't know. I would feel good about two and two from those four games. Uh, three one, three and one possibility, but I think two and two is about as reasonable as a, a sort of uh, expectation you could have coming from those two or from that slate right there. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody's expecting a win at Clemson. Uh, but, uh, you know, what Wake Forest is a game Florida State needs to win. And then, worst case scenario, you lose one of those or two. You can't imagine. Look, you can't lose to Syracuse and Miami at home in back to back weeks. And that's got to be the revenge tour for yeah. Florida State. They right. got to go. Uh, last year, they, they got the loss uh, to. Uh, uh, Can we talk well, about now? Is, is Miami at home or is it Miami? Miami's at home, yeah. We're, remember, we yeah. were down in Miami Gardens. That's man, right. That's right. Know, the nonsense. So we were there. Syracuse and Miami were two losses last year on the road. You Correct. get them at home, get a little revenge tour against those two teams. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you come out of those four, two and two, you're okay. You'd love to be three and one for sure. Right, right. But okay. at that point, if you're, you know, if you're four and oh, or five, four and one or five and oh, and if you put a three and one after that, I mean, you're having a nice season at that point. Yeah, for sure. All right, and then after that, uh, a trip up to Boston College. Uh, the good thing is no bandana game, no red bandana game, right? There's no no uh, Friday night games, nothing crazy like that on the schedule of Florida State. Do they only do they only do that for the for Friday night games? I think so. I think usually the crazy thing is they did it against Clemson two years ago, and that was the year that Clemson absolutely steamrolled them. Uh, so they're not undefeated on the red bandana game, but you don't you don't want to be at Chestnut Hill on a red bandana night. I mean, Florida State can attest to that in 2017. Uh, so you got uh, Boston College uh, on the road, and then you're back in Florida for the remainder of uh, the month. I mean, think about that. You look in the month of November. I mean, Florida State plays four or three of their four games in the state of Florida. Uh, two of them at home, and then the last one, obviously, as always, uh, Thanksgiving weekend at Florida. Uh, that's a bit daunting there, but I think, and then you look at Boston College, that Boston College, the Florida sort of three game set right there in Boston, back home against Alabama State. That's a win, uh, and then at Florida, two and one is is a sort of I think a, a reasonable expectation. And I, I'm not saying that Florida is some sort of juggernaut now, but it just doesn't feel extremely encouraging after what you saw in the final game of the season from Florida State that they're going to be able to walk in. Uh, to the swamp and beat Florida. It's a rivalry game. Crazy things happen. Florida State's going to have a new offensive coordinator with Kendall Bryles. So who knows what could happen? Uh, all sorts of crazy things could happen, but I'm not ready to, to go ahead and sketch that uh, into the win column quite yet. Uh, but your thoughts, Ira, about going to Boston and being back home the last two weeks of the season uh, in Tallahassee with that final bye week uh, before Florida? Yeah, I'm not exactly thrilled about November in Boston. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I'd prefer true. that in maybe September, but... Uh, um, yeah, the weather there can be a little dicey, but you know, remember the, uh, the Geno Hayes game, Oh yeah. uh, Florida state went up there in really awful weather. It was rainy and nasty and, uh, knocked off Matty ice and the boys. Uh, so it's not unprecedented that Florida state can play well, uh, up there in inclement weather. Um, but yeah, Alabama state at home, uh, the bye week before Florida is big. You know what I was told that originally, you know, cause Florida, the sec schedules came out a month ago. Um, and Florida has a bye week before that game. And so Florida state, I think from what I understand that they expressed their interest in making sure that they had a bye week before that game as well. Florida had a bye week before that game. So the ACC was able to make that happen. Um, and so that, that this, there's kind of, there's kind of a few weeks of wrangling that goes on behind the scenes between the schools and the ACC office where they'll, there'll be different drafts along the way. And uh, I think one of the things FSU really pushed for was to get that bye week before Florida because they have it and they got it. And really, if you look at it, I think Missouri, uh, Florida, I mean, this is probably isn't a big deal, but Florida, the week before their bye week is at Missouri. Florida State's got a home game against Alabama State. So really, theoretically, if they get past Boston College, I feel like they've got a couple weeks to really prepare for Florida. And, and, and I agree. I mean, right now, we can't deny that Florida looks like a, a more st- solid uh, debut season. They obviously had a much better season than Florida State did, and you'd think they'll carry that over. But you know, having two weeks to prepare, prepare is certainly nice. All right. All right. So before we saw this schedule come out in all of its glory, laying out, you know, week by week, uh, blow by blow, how things are going to look out. We obviously knew the teams that were going to be on the slate. We didn't know how it was going to shake out in terms of two bye weeks and when you're going to be on the road, when you're going to be at home. 
so I think you know before we saw this, Ira, what were you what were you sort of thinking? Maybe win loss window, like something between seven to nine, nine being very optimistic. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like eight was probably what you'd be happy with. Uh, nine would be on the very high end of optimistic, you know, man, you'd be thrilled if they won nine games, uh, after winning five a year ago, uh, seven, you know, seemed possible, but to me that doesn't show a lot of improvement. Um, so I think eight is kind of where they, when I, you know, looking at the, the teams, I'm like, okay, eight games is, you'd probably be pretty happy with that. Once you see it play out, you know, nine doesn't seem out of the realm anymore. You know, I think the, the it sets up pretty nicely. Um, I, you know, this time of year, everybody's optimistic. So at this point, the way it sets up, I think nine's you know very possible. Um, but I still think eight, I think you'd be okay with. I think most people would be okay with. Uh, you agree or no? I, uh, I think, well, the thing is, it really comes down to, and you guys said in the video that's up on, uh, you know, over on warchant.com with yourself and Gene Williams, uh, and Jeff Cameron, I think just everything pivots off that Boise State game. Um, I mean, if if you lose that game, that's just it's. I mean, it's going to be tough to rebound off that. I know you get to come home the next week and you play Louisiana Monroe, but then you have to hit back on the road against Virginia. I mean, maybe you maybe you can lose to Boise and then still win out uh, up until the bye week. I mean, it, it's very well possible. But you know, you, we've talked about it on Wake Up Board Channel with Corey Clark, and and you've mentioned as well. It's just. The whole culture thing, this is a team now that's, whatever, 12-12 and 12 in their last ACC, 24 ACC games or whatever the number is. It's just a team that's not used to winning. Uh, when the going gets tough, this team doesn't necessarily play their best. It's hard to imagine them being able to rebound after uh, losing to Boise. But if let's say you beat Boise. You're feeling really good. You're going to beat Louisiana Monroe. Um, I'll, I'll take I'll take Florida State over Virginia on the road. Um, I'll take Louisville. I mean, I'm I'm serious, and I'm if you've ever listened to me on the podcast, I'm I'm probably the most cynical guy that talks about Florida State. You beat Boise. I feel like five and zero going to that bye week is is, is more than a fifty fifty sort of proposition. If you can beat Boise, um, I think if you beat Boise, then Virginia gets on the table and, and feels a little more dicey. Yeah, and I'm actually just pulling up Virginia. So they they'll have they get. You know they've got a little pretty tough. Uh, they get they open with Pitt uh, on Saturday the thirty first. Then they got William and Mary before Florida State comes to town. But but Pitt's a pretty legit. I mean that's on the road. Um, that's a tough challenge for them. So they're not gonna. Sometimes you worry about like that third week, like the Louisville game a couple of years ago, where Florida State goes up and Louisville had two cupcakes to prepare for. Oh yeah. Um, so Florida State kind of felt like they were waylaid. Lamar Jackson obviously played a part in that. Well, he's three years ago, um, a big part of that as well. But but uh, the fact that Virginia does have a legitimate opponent on the road in their season opener, at least you feel like they they can't just sit all summer and prepare for Florida State. So, so I can see that I can see that being a win. But you know that to me, it's it's hard to pencil that in as a win. We saw how bad this team was away from home. Um, so they've got to change some things. I mean, they've got to they've got to get mentally tougher. Um, and and that's why that Boise State State game is so so important because now. You know, you have all winter and then the spring football to kind of get guys fired up again and kind of get them believing. You'll have some changes on the coaching staff, so guys will be bought in to that. The players have to see results too. It's not just the fans. The players have to go out and play well and say, okay, all right, these guys know what they're doing. They're putting us in positions to succeed because if they go out there and play poorly and feel like they weren't prepared for Boise State, then, yeah, it's going to be hard to get that back, especially, you know, after you had a whole off season to kind of recharge. Okay. All right, man. Let's so do yeah, that, 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 I agree with that opener is huge. All right, let's go week by week. Let's not, let's not talk about the, actually, I mean, we feel like we do, we do need to talk about the Boise state game. Let's, let's operate under the assumption they beat Boise. Okay. So they beat Boise. I got them two and O against Louisiana Monroe. Okay. I'll be a little bit cynical. I'll say loss against Virginia. I'm, I'm singing four and one. You beat Louisville. You beat NC state at home. You're four and one. Um, like the, not the best case, but, uh, right below that, I, I'd say four and one going pretty to the realistic, first spot. Pretty practical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, NC states, I think Dave Dorn's got actually a good program rolling there right now. I mean, I know they'll lose, uh, Finley finally, Guys are there forever, it feels like. So they'll be breaking in a new quarterback uh, in Tallahassee. You, you feel good about those sort of things. Obviously, Louisville breaking a new staff. So let's say four and one there. You have a week off. Clemson, four and two. 
five and two Wake Forest. We, we feel like Winston Salem, Snuggy Hill. We show the proper respect that it's due, but you walk out of there with a victory. Feels like. Would you agree, Ira? Five and two. Yeah, yeah I think so too. You can never count a, a win at Snuggy Hill until it's the seconds are at zero. But yeah, no, I think Florida State. I mean, I, especially the way they handle them this year, I just think that Florida State will be too much for them. Okay, five and two. I'll be Mister Cynical, and I'll just say that Syracuse has been playing Florida State fairly tough ever since Dino Babers got there. Uh, they are also losing their quarterback. I know it's a revenge game, but I'll say five and three. You, you want to put Syracuse as a win and go to six and two. I'm taking six and two. Yeah. Okay, all right, six and two. Uh, then you follow up that week against Miami um, at home. Who knows how they're going to look like with with Manny Diaz running the show there. Um, I will be somewhat optimistic. I'll go to six and three. I'll say they beat Miami six and three. You're going to go seven and two. You'll you'll take the win over Miami. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay. Um, oh, all right. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Come on, Ira. Come to the dark side. Get cynical. Because, well, this one's so. I mean, this one. I mean, it's it's always difficult to predict what's going to happen in no in November in January. Uh, however, I think this is particularly because we have no idea that what Manny Diaz is going to do as a head coach. I mean, it's, it's everybody at that down there is super fired up right now because he's different. You know, oh, I remember. Hey, he? I remember that Ira. I remember about being fired <laughs> up because something was different. <laughs> and so, so that doesn't necessarily always translate to immediate success. I mean, look, I mean, he's bringing back the receiver that got dismissed from the team. He's bringing in transfers. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, Manny Diaz, when he was here as a GA, I mean, people have been talking about him since since then. He's a super bright guy. He's obviously done a good job as defensive coordinator. But it's a little bit different being in that chair. And, and the decisions you make sometimes in the offseason translate to uh, how you're going to play. So we'll see. I mean, the other thing is Florida State's been playing them earlier in the year before they fold. This, this year, uh, they'll be getting a little later in the year, so they could already be on their uh, descent at that point. So – uh, it's a toss up to me, man. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and take Florida state. I'm going to go ahead and take Florida state in that game just because I don't think, I think Miami might be uh, trending in the wrong direction in November. Okay. So I've got them. At, so I'll go yeah. seven and two. You got six and three. Yeah. Six and three. Uh, Boston college. Oh, I mean, that could be a, 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 a weird one. I'll, I'll give them the, the win over Boston college. Um, although I mean, I don't know. They, you know, Boston college could have, Snuck one past them in Tallahassee last year, but uh, that was last year. Uh, I'll, I'll say they go up to Chestnut Hill and they win. I'll go. Yeah, seven. I guess what I, I guess what seven. I'm saying here is I think they're going to split those two. Oh, so okay. I'm going to say seven and three. I, even if they beat Miami, I think that I just have a feeling they're not going to play well in both of those games. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take Boston College. So a split there. I'm going to uh, gets me back to seven and three. Okay. See, I, I'm with you. I, I feel like they'll split Syracuse and Miami. I'm more worried about that than I am going up to Chestnut Hill, which is probably stupid. I have a um, feeling uh, the Syracuses are going to come uh, crashing back to earth. Yeah. Dino got his contract extension. Okay. Everybody's excited about what they did this year. I think they're going to come back to earth. So Dino Babers went from Clubber Lang to Rocky in, in Rocky three right now. He had eye of the tiger. Now he's, now he's got all the fame and the fortune. They're he's going to start taking it easy. All right. I like that. that. All right, uh, we're eight and three. Well, the good things we didn't mention is that we're going to be in a bowl game. So in November, we feel like Florida State's going to be bowl eligible, which will be a huge uh, sort of lift uh, to all of our uh, psyches, which is a really good thing. So we got seven and three with two final games. You're eight and three after the Alabama State game. You have a week off, and then you're playing the Gators in Gainesville. I mean, I take no pride. I take no joy in this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna probably say that doesn't work out for Florida State. So you end the season at eight and four, and you have a bowl game. Uh, somewhere that's not too true. Maybe eight and four can sneak you into Nashville. Maybe sneaks into Charlotte. I, I don't know what the bowl tie-ins are these days, but uh, you're going to end up in a fairly decent bowl game at eight and four. And I mean, uh, the difference between five and seven and eight and four has got to feel amazing. But uh, what, what do you have it finishing out at? At least in the first twelve games, uh, you got eight and four as well. Or you want to go nine and three? No, I've got eight and four as well. I don't. Th I don't think they're going to beat Florida in Gainesville. But I would say this. Um, it is interesting, you know, how they get there is going to matter because, like your scenario, you've got them possibly losing to Syracuse and beating Miami. I've got them beating Miami and losing to Boston College. Either of those, I think, if you if you at least beat one of your rivals, I think that eight and four oh, yeah. goes down a little bit easier. I think if you're eight and four, but you lose to Clemson, you lose to Miami, you lose to Florida, it's. You know, I think that's going to be still tough to, to stomach, you know, losing to all three big rivals, um, really your two real big rivals, and then 
your third rival. So I think uh, eight and four with a win over Miami, I think people can live with. Uh, if it's eight and four with uh, only beating everybody else, I think that's going to be uh, still a little bit bitter for people to swallow. That's fair. I think and you're correct. I mean, you have to you have to win those games, and uh, no matter how much we keep obviously trending towards a playoff, and everything is all about the playoff. Only four teams make it, so uh, beating those rivals keeps you warm uh, in, in the brutal cold of January and stuff. When especially when you're not playing in bowl games, so. All right, we, we both feel like 8-4 and four is a, a distinct and rational, practical, reasonable possibility, which uh, is going to be a huge lift, obviously, for Florida State if they can get one win over a rival. Uh, what you got cooking up on Warchant.com right now, Ira? Did you, uh, did you break down that schedule uh, somewhat and lay things out for the fans? Yeah, we'll have more on that. Uh, and I think uh, our buddy Corey Clark, I think he's going to come through with a, with a column. Okay. He uh, he he actually teased it to me is that it was going to be kind of tongue in cheek. So if Corey's saying it's going to be kind of tongue in cheek, I can't even imagine Uh-oh. Uh-oh. what kind of insanity that's going to mean. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we've got that, and then obviously uh, plenty of recruiting coverage. And you guys got the chat tonight. I can't wait to yep. see how that goes. Yep. So uh, yeah, man, apps. things are rolling. And then uh, uh, you know, obviously we I, we probably should talk about the James Blackman situation uh, briefly. Why don't we give one? Yeah. We don't give stuff away for free around here, Ira. We don't give stuff away for free around well, here, man. We, we have some. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, kidding. I guess I'm if you're kidding. on the tribal council, you can talk about. It. But yeah, I mean, he's uh, uh, there's a report he's going to go into the transfer portal, um, and uh, so we, you know, we've got some thoughts on that in the tribal council. I mean, you know, look, it, it, this is the new reality. I mean, this is you know, you're going to have lots of kids doing that. The one thing I would say about it is there, it's not a totally risk-free proposition for them. The, that if they do put their name in the transfer portal, uh, the university at that point has the right to say, okay, you know what? At the end of the semester, we're done. It's not even the end of this year. It's the end of the semester. So if a kid puts his name in the transfer, por- transfer portal in November and the school is fine with that, they can say that day, they can say, okay, cool. Well, in the end of December, you're done getting financial aid from us. You're done getting a scholarship from us, even if you change your mind. Uh, now, guys like James Blackman, you know, guys that are better players, of course, you know, schools are not going to do that to them. They're going to come to them and and try to convince them to, Hey, um, and that's the, and that's what will happen here. James Black. And once word gets to FSU, which already had pretty quickly after that report came out, if it hadn't, if they didn't know already, then the coaches will then basically re-recruit the player, try to convince them, dude, you're fine. There's no reason to do that. Try to get them to, and they can actually withdraw their name pretty quickly from the process. So, uh, it's just something we're going to have to kind of monitor, uh, it's obviously not a good thing, but it's also not necessarily proof or uh, a determined fact that James Blackman's going to transfer. We'll have more more reaction to that. Well, you know, I was kind of being tongue in cheek to take one from the great Corey Clark about not talking about. It. I did want to talk about it with you, Corey, and myself. Obviously, we'll talk about it on Wake Up War Chant uh, on Thursday morning. I just, it's obviously not a good thing that he's put his name in the portal, but it just the fact that it. it I don't want to say it's come to this. But that he has gone ahead and, and, and done that, I just don't know how. And I don't feel like that's going to break up any sort of relationship, and it's going to be tough to reconcile things. But for him to put his name in there, uh, I mean, he he has every right to do that. He has every right to see if there's better opportunities out there for him. But it just, I don't want to overreact because we've seen all year long. I mean, people are talking about this player, that player, and the other. It's put their name in the portal, and these kids did. Uh, and all of them are, are still with the program, and it seems like they're not going to be leaving. And I know I think George Campbell and this here Upshur are two guys that uh, are, are new additions to the portal. That's probably more likely to go through, uh, at least for one of them. But I, I just – what could possibly happen? Because it felt like coming out of the season it was, okay, Francois is probably going to move along. They're going to get in the transfer quarterback market, and that, that quickly dried up. Folks thought Justin Fields was a possibility. Gene Williams went on record constantly saying that was never going to happen. Uh, Tate Martell from Ohio State ends up uh, in Miami because Fields goes up to Ohio State. Jalen Hurts now today has uh, gone from Bama to Oklahoma. So that market, in, in terms of guys who are immediately eligible, Martell wasn't one, but Jalen Hurts was, uh, has dried up. They did add Jordan Travis. But I just I wonder what, what could be possibly going on through James Blackman's head that now that Francois is going to stick around, uh, that he's put his name in the portal that just uh, that seems a little bit discouraging if you're the thought that James Blackman gives Florida State a better chance to be successful in 2019 and in the future. Yeah, man. I mean, there's a there's a lot of avenues to discuss about that. I mean, because it says a lot of things. I mean, I think one, uh, you know, the obvious one 
would be that, you know, I think the overriding thing that anybody can figure out is that James Blackman is concerned about if he stays, how is he, how is he going to be used and how open is the quarterback competition going to be? You know, DeAndre Francois decided he's going to stay, whether or not that's through the fall or not, we'll have to see, but he did say he's going to stay. You know, it's, there's a lot of moving parts here in terms of Kendall Bryles. You got a new offensive coordinator. Uh, we don't know how those conversations have gone. How is Kendall connected with James? James may have, I mean, these are all just kind of theories. I mean, James could have not loved those first conversations. Um, he also could be concerned about the offensive line and the team around him. He also could be concerned about whether he's going to get a fair shot. So there's a lot of reasons he could be concerned. But to your point, you know, like I was told Xavier Peters, when Xavier Peters went into the database, the transfer portal, it was like a, I think it was like the day before Christmas. And then like he went away for Christmas and came right back and said, take me out, you know? So it's, you know, it, you could be kind of dealing with the whims of players and their families. And uh, so you don't want to, you know, you don't want to diminish it. You don't want to sensationalize it, but you also don't want to diminish it. I think it's clear that he's not happy. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be just happy and over the moon about how things are going and then put your name in the transfer portal. Right. So, uh, so, so we can take that away. Um, but it could be something where the coaching staff, you know, can reconcile pretty quickly. My first thoughts is I, thought about writing a column about it and I, and I, I might, or I might not, I'll talk to Corey. Do and see it. He has, Do it. I what he has a plan, column. But, well, I mean, my first thought is, you know, uh, Bailey Hockman seemingly caught them by surprise by transferring. You know, this guy was Bailey Hockman was in the quarterback room with the coaches for, you know, an entire eight, nine months, went through all preseason camp and then finds out he's not getting the starting job and just pieces out. And it seemed like FSU was caught by surprise on that. That wasn't a good sign that they that they didn't have any inclination he was going to be leaving. From every indication we've had, they didn't know he was going to be leaving. Well, now, if this catches them by surprise as well, again, it's just how 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 good of a uh, finger on the pulse of your program and certainly your quarterback room do you have if this happens? So, so to me, that's kind of another red flag. I mean, it's not it doesn't necessarily say that. Willie screwed anything up or Kendall Brown screwed anything up. And it may not be anybody. I mean, it may just, it may be best for everybody. If James Blackman goes, we don't know for sure that he can do what Ken, Kendall Browns needs him to do. But if they keep getting surprised by quarterbacks leaving, you know, it's certainly not a good sign. All right. All right. Well, uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, check out warchant.com for more on a potential uh, addition or subtraction to the, uh, the quarterback room and what's going on with the transfer portal. Uh, as well as potentially column from Ira or Corey Clark. If you're not a member, use the promo code WARCHANT30 for 30 free days of access, no obligation. Check it out, uh, join, and then you probably won't leave. You'll stick around for life. That's how we both ended up here. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Ira. I'm Aslan. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Stay connected uh, to WARCHANT.com.